Greetings, I'm Rob Chappers. And I'm the captain. We're at the amazing Anderton's.co.uk here, this fine, misty, foggy, it's quite cold very day. foggy. Yes. Very foggy. The traffic was terrible this morning, all because someone from the council decided they'd mow the central reservation to the main road to get here. Well, you know what? At least you can rest assured that your council pennies are being well spent, Lee. Yes, they are. Making Thank Guildford look much. beautiful. Uh, what have you got? Well... I know if you're a fan of Chappers Channel, you're probably watching this like two minutes after the video's gone up, which will probably be in 2013. Fast! Fast! <laughs> Fast. <laughs> um, but what we have here is a sneak preview of the guitars that Gibson are releasing in 2014. New Gibson New guitars. Gibson Day. Um, NGD. Um, and what I thought we'd do is kind of start at the bottom of the range, take it in turns to review the guitars, and we're going to work from the, the Melody Maker right up to some of the guitars that you see on the wall behind us here. There's about seven, eight new guitars, and each guitar is going to have its own video. So this is the first one, so stay tuned and watch all the other ones too, please. Um, right, this melody is maker. a Melody Maker. Melody Maker exists purely simply because back in the day, uh, Gibson needed to find a, a cheaper way of making these so that students and less affluent guitar players could afford them. So the Melody Maker is a sort of a cut down, thinner bodied, um, this particular one has P90s on it, wrap around tail bridge, uh, tail piece, sorry. Um, and you know, is a, a pretty cool guitar. It's still a mahogany body with a maple cap, albeit sort of, you know, thinner than you'd expect. Um, Every one of these guitars now has got uh, this 120th anniversary logo. Why is that, Rob? Well, it's because it's the 120th <laughs> anniversary of Gibson guitars. Wow, that's there old, are isn't it? Quite a few updated changes to the whole range yes. that they all share. Yes. That's one of them. What else is there different on that guitar? Well, they put the, the sort of everybody's favourite sort of knobs on these, the, the ones with the knurly bits, so that, you know, no matter how sweaty you are, you're never going to yeah. kind of slip on one of these. This particular one. First found on PRS, I think. Were they? Well, they were on my PRS anyway. Um, this particular one, again, is a, a 50 style um, neck, which, do you know what? Every time I pick up a 50 style one, I kind of think, do you know what? I'm sure there's less difference between uh, 50s and 60s now than there used to be. So it's not a real chubber neck at all. Um, these, particular, <laughs> these particular P90s are wound, this one has rather informatively nine, nine and a half thousand, thousand uh, winds uh, around an Alnico magnet. And this one has 10,000, it's a little bit hotter. I wonder how long hotter. it takes to wind <laughs> 9,500 winds on a Well, in the olden days, like a, someone well, in a factory no, 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 would do, no, no, wouldn't no, no, it? And that was why, because they had to manually count it, yeah, yeah. that was why no two pickups ever sounded the same, because you know, they'd never ever, you know, you just, I don't think you could count to 10,000 twice, could you, and get yeah. it right. But I'm sure a machine now kind of goes Brrr! There you go. Do you reckon they were like really fast at brushing their teeth after a few years back at the factory? And all, all sorts of other things that involve wrist Yeah, action, imagine I that. Just, everything would be just really, really quick, wouldn't it? You know. <laughs> what do you do for a living? I work winding pickups. I'm, do you want to come for a drink? <laughs> <laughs> that was drinking, by the way, in case you're wondering what else that might be um, articulating on. It uh, comes with uh, a really nice Gibson Deluxe gig bags, you know, the ones with the super thick padding. Oh, and that colour, strangely. Tell me a quick well, story about why it's I'm that colour. I'm glad you mentioned that, because this isn't the only colour this guitar comes in, although it's probably the most infamous. This is called TV Yellow, um, and this colour, which, <clears throat> uh, you know, is, I suppose, mustardy, but back in the day of uh, black and white television, I'm sure you guys all know this, if you turned up with a white guitar um, to the studios, or, or um, what would happen is that the heavy uh, lights used in the studio would reflect off the guitar and sort of blow out the, the, the your sort of guitar image on the uh, on the TV cameras. So the, the cameramen and the producers never liked that. So the, Gibson uh, designed this color called TV Yellow. Uh, which Outdated digital just, media yellow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which looks white in black and white. <clears throat> so if you don't like this particular color, then just shoot all your videos in black and white and you'll just look like you've got a white guitar. But I kind of think it's become one of those like just synonymous guitar uh, colors with like old guitars. Yeah, see for me, uh, this, by the way, you have to play one of these. These feel absolutely awesome. I don't know whether it's the setup today from our wonderful techs or what it is, mm. but both of these guitars are doing Gibson proud. Just not a big fan of this color. No, according to my spec sheet here, it says it has a maple neck. Obviously it's a rosewood fretboard, but a maple neck. So yes. that's kind of- um... Have you noticed the size of those strap buttons, Lee? 
Well, the strap buttons have been enlarged again because I think there was some criticism on the older Gibson guitars that the strap button was quite small and if you didn't use strap locks, your strap would fall off. So don't worry now, these have got proper UFO style strap buttons. Let's hear it. Today, uh, I am using a, a Blackstar S145 that they Ooh. kindly sent us. Uh, so I'm gonna just go through my sounds here on this Blackstar S145 that uh, they've lent us, which is kind of cool. Thanks Blackstar. Uh, right. They're P90s, so what are you hearing, first of all? Hummage. Hummage, because they're not proper humbuckers. That'll get worse as we go to a um, distorted or sound. Or better, if you like that sound. Yeah, so here's the neck pickup. <laughs> Your usual tone and volume controls. Both together, which cancels the hum. the bridge pickup. If you have some of that cat and crunch. Yeah, if I put a bit of crunch on it, it's a little bit gnarly. I like this sound actually. That sounds so like to you. It's kind of, if you're a fan of that sort of, um, I've just, you know, I, I want to rock up with a guitar that doesn't look like I've spent a lot of money <clears> on it uh, and just rock out with some cool tunes. I'm thinking, you know, guys like uh, Billy from, uh, Billy Joe from Green Day is that kind of, I can just see him rocking out with this kind of guitar. Um, but it just looks cool and it's not expensive. In the UK, uh, expect to get change from five hundred pounds for one of these. Ooh, so it's um, it's almost like Epiphone territory, isn't it? Is there something new about the bridge? Uh, the bridge is. The um, I can't remember what did it. What I think it's it called the now? lightning, but I might be wrong. Let's look at the spec right. sheet on the Let's floor. Look at the spec sheet on the floor. Um, Holy Rob's floor specification. What does it say? It's on the um, main. Hardware, satin chrome, lightning bar. Lightning bar, I was right. He was right. And I knew a thing. Do you know what the lightning bar <laughs> is? It's basically, it's an intonated wraparound bridge. Yes. So the idea is, is that um, the lightning streak, which obviously is this raised bit here, is essentially compensating for the intonation for each string. You can use the uh, slots either side to raise or lower it, depending on how you want the action set. Uh, and we have, again, very retro kind of white um, buttons on the on the uh, the tuners to yeah. give it that sort of you know studenty kind of look. So, so I guess they did this instead of making the frets wiggly. Well, that's right. That's the alternative they could have done. Yeah, what guitar was that on? Just whichever one was just completely shit because that's just a stupid idea. Well, you, all the the three blokes that bought it will probably disagree. <laughs> um, no, there is a brand out there that that compensate all the frets so that the yeah. intonation is even better. But I'm sure it's awesome. Uh, Jimi Hendrix never did that, did he? Well, no, but he, he was never in tune. did sound out of tune all the time. <laughs> Think of another guitar player. Steve Vai. <laughs> Peter um, Green. Peter Green. Peter never Green. Never used wiggly frets. In fairness, Always every great. famous guitar player never oh, yeah. used wiggly frets. Well, that's true. There you go. Uh, let's jam. <laughs> let's jam. So that's what these videos are going to do. Talk about the guitar, have a jam, move on. In case you weren't familiar with what Captain and I do. <laughs> I like you. I like calling it Captain Crunch. And I, do you know what we'll do? We'll use um, when we review that guitar. Yes. I will use a different guitar in the jam so okay. that we kind of mix it all up. I like that. Mix a matosis. Let's play some like a rabbit in the headlights. <laughs> <laughs> 